Hi, in this video we will look at Bitcoin versus the Bitcoin dominance. Or in other words, we will try to find out how is the Bitcoin market cycle, those big macro ups and downs, how are they related to altcoins being pumped or dumped? So in what point of the market cycle are altcoins actually a profitable investment? And in what points of time it's better to be outside of altcoins. The reason why this is important is because if you don't time the market correctly with altcoins, your potential loss is way higher than with Bitcoin. So in this example over here, we see ADA from top to bottom. If you got really unlucky, you could have lost 94%. And so obviously we don't want that. We want to know at what point in time should you be rather be heavy on Bitcoin? And at what point in the market cycle is it better to take on more risk and to get heavier into altcoins? Now, what you see in this chart over here is in green, the Bitcoin price from basically the end of the last bull run in 2017. So that's in green here, the Bitcoin price. And in white, you see the Bitcoin dominance. Or in other words, how much of the overall cryptocurrency market cap, how much of that money was relatively speaking in percentage terms in Bitcoin. So the Bitcoin dominance you can see in white. And so on this chart, we see two scales. On the right, we have the Bitcoin price plotted again on a logarithmic scale. So here at the bottom, the price steps are smaller compared to here at the top. And on the left, we've got the scale for the Bitcoin dominance. So if the white chart here is at 100, that means all of crypto's money is in Bitcoin. If the white line is at zero, it means all of the money is in altcoins and Bitcoin is dead, basically. And so we see times in which Bitcoin is the favorable asset and other times where Bitcoin is only 35% of the market, 65% of the money is in altcoins. And so the way I like to look at this is the Bitcoin dominance is kind of like a measure for how risk averse is the market. Or in other words, how scared are people to lose money? If the market is really risk averse, people are in Bitcoin and don't touch those risky altcoins. If people expect the market to continue to rise and we are in a bull market, that's when the money shifts into altcoins. So basically Bitcoin becomes boring and the really high returns are in those smaller market cap coins. Now let's first look at this first bull run here in 2017 and the crash in 2018. How did altcoins actually behave during this time? So what we can see is that with the start of the ICO boom in the spring of 2017, that the Bitcoin dominance was gradually falling while the Bitcoin price was increasing. Now we have reached the maximum Bitcoin price in the last bull run in the middle of December 2017. And Bitcoin dominance was at around 60%. Now the price of Bitcoin didn't rise any further, but the altcoins did gain ground. So one month after we have reached the absolute top in Bitcoin, altcoins were staying strong. People were still expecting prices to rise. And so more and more money flowed into altcoins. By middle of January, we had 40% in altcoins. Now it's important to look at the trend, how Bitcoin was actually performing during this time. What was the dominant chart pattern here in Bitcoin? Even on a logarithmic scale, the Bitcoin price was rising faster and faster. So you had this accelerating parabolic upwards trend. And so people got into altcoins. But then at the beginning of March 2018, something interesting happened. This parabolic rise was clearly broken. And so just look at what happened in March. The Bitcoin price dropped another 40%, but the altcoins had it even worse. The dominance went from, from around 40% to 50%. And what happened afterwards is that the Bitcoin price itself, it started to form this corridor where it consolidated sideways while forming lower highs along the way. So clearly no parabolic rise anymore. So even though the Bitcoin price didn't lose much in this time frame, it basically went sideways. Altcoins got totally destroyed. The Bitcoin dominance continued to rise. And so what I take out of this is altcoins are really only bought when the market is extremely bullish. They're basically used as a vehicle to add more leverage to crypto. If Bitcoin is rising and people are confident in the bull market, money shifts to alts and people want to get even more risk exposure and with it potentially more profits. But once there is the slightest indication that the 
Momentum is out of the market. People are very quick to sell their altcoins or at least to shift from altcoins to Bitcoin. In other words, if you are heavily invested in altcoins, you are really betting on the market to rise. If Bitcoin goes sideways, you are likely going to lose with altcoins over a few months. So we had this big crash in 2018 and we had the consolidation over here. And after we have found this, what most people thought is a sustainable floor, then we got the real capitulation and we went down from 6 to 3k. Now, if we come out of a bear market and we start seeing Bitcoin picking up again, is this actually a good time to be in altcoins? Or in other words, if the market is really, really depressed and there's already been a lot of sell off of altcoins in those consolidations before and obviously in the crash afterwards, would it actually make sense in those really depressed phases to buy altcoins since they are inherently more risky and thus if the market recovers, would they actually give us a phenomenal outperformance compared to Bitcoin? Would it make sense actually instead of accumulating Bitcoin over here to start stacking up on really risky altcoins? And the way I look at this is probably not. The market is not yet ripe for risky investments. People buy into altcoins whenever the sentiment is really positive, when the bull run is already in full motion. When momentum is really strong. So let's just look at what happened to Bitcoin dominance during this depressed time and during the first bull run out of that depression. This bull run over here in 2019 helped Bitcoin grow by a 3x. And during the same time, Bitcoin dominance increased. So during this whole bull run, people were still not getting into altcoins. There was no alt season here. People got really scared after this crash. And the only way they would get back into crypto is by having something more or less safe or where the risk at least of losing 95% is not as high compared to say maybe buying Tron or Litecoin or EOS. And so this floor was probably really created by people that were still dollar cost averaging into the market. And so this run up happened by people mainly buying Bitcoin. Now, when did the next alt season really start? It wasn't until beginning of this year. So this whole 10x from depression to the beginning of this year, this 10x in Bitcoin, you would have done worse if you were in altcoins during that time. Bitcoin dominance increased over that time. So when the market is really depressed and is about to recover or you speculate on it to have found a bottom, it seems to be better to be in Bitcoin and not in altcoins. Even though altcoins in general have a higher leverage or a higher market beta, they move more in percentage terms up or down compared to Bitcoin. Even though that's true, this whole 10x movement in Bitcoin until the beginning of this year has not been enough to help altcoins outperform. This altcoin rally over here or this big Bitcoin dominance drop, it started happening when Bitcoin already hit 30k. So it seems to be really in more or less a late stage of the cycle. At least the bull run must have run for quite a while. In this case, we are talking around two years. Currently, the Bitcoin dominance is at a historically low level. And so how dangerous is it right now to hold altcoins? Should you switch everything back into Bitcoin? That's a question of all questions. So let's look at how much time actually do you have after a potential market cycle drop to sell your altcoins without having underperformed too heavily against Bitcoin. The last market cycle top was in the middle of December. And even at that time, people still continued buying altcoins. So Bitcoin went down, altcoins went up. Altcoins then lost, then recovered again, and then made their final capitulation, basically. The Bitcoin dominance then stayed at around 55%. So altcoins were 45%. It took until the middle of August 2018 until we reached this kind of equilibrium. So that's eight months from Bitcoin's market cycle top until complete capitulation of altcoins. It took eight months. If you want to take this mini capitulation, it's three months. There was no loss at all, comparatively speaking, in altcoins versus Bitcoin. If you sold your altcoins two months after the market cycle top. So there seems to be a real lag, a prolonged lag of several weeks until the altcoin crowd starts selling off their holdings. So as we said, when you have altcoins, you are betting on the market to continue to rise. If the market goes down or even just flat, altcoins are likely to bleed against Bitcoin. 
at least that's what happened in the past. So if this recent top in April here really stays the top in Bitcoin for a while and Bitcoin continues to go sideways or downwards, I expect Bitcoin dominance to go up and altcoins to bleed. And so you probably have around two months from the top of the Bitcoin price until altcoins might start bleeding. The top was in middle of April, so if Bitcoin doesn't make any major moves to the upside until the middle of June, which is in two to three weeks, to me it looks like altcoins will lose ground against Bitcoin. If you enjoyed this video, please give this a like, so YouTube will show the video to a broader audience and the channel can grow. And if you haven't yet, feel free to subscribe. We've also got a Telegram channel that you can find a link to in the video description below. Feel free to join there as well. See you next time. Bye-bye.